Hi, I'm Pasquale. Welcome to Little Lessons, a video series where we'll teach you about the internals of Lito and how to use it. This video will be about diffing in sections. Sections, as you might be aware, are Lito's abstraction to render complex collections of data. One of the main advantages of using sections is that they can efficiently generate the minimal set of operations needed in order to update a complex list. Let's start with an example. This on my right is a very simple section that displays a list of friend objects. In the onCreateChildren callback, we delegate the rendering to a dative section. The dative section is an abstraction to render an homogeneous list of items, and in general, is one of the most important tools to master to use sections effectively. What we're doing here specifically is to give it a list of items to render and an on-render callback that describes how each item in that list should be rendered. In this case, we are deciding to render a friend model with a friend item component. Pretty simple, right? Now, all we have to do is create a list of data to render. Let's say that we want to render a list of all the members of the Lita team and maybe add some information about the last time each one of them was aligned. So once we have defined both the sections that we want to render and the list of models, we can just use a recycler collection component to display our section in a little view. Recycler collection component is basically the glue between UI components and section. This is pretty much everything we need to display a list with Lito and sections. Now let's have a look at what's going on behind the scenes here. We were saying that sections is really about determining the minimum number of operations needed to display a list on screen. To be able to do that, sections keeps track of which props are currently displayed on the screen and compares them with some new props whenever either a set root or a state update happens. In this case, this is the first time we're rendering this list, so nothing is currently on screen and the current props are null. The new props on the other side are the list we just built. On this table, for each item in the list, we are showing the type of the item and its memory address. We'll see later why this is important. As you can imagine, in this case, it's pretty easy for sections to figure out what to do. Nothing was there before and nine new items need to be shown now. So the resulting operation is to simply insert nine new components in our list. One per every frame model we had in the props. If we finally run this code, this is what we'll see. Beautiful, right? Now, let's say that we want to change the content of this list. In Lito, whenever you want to update some UI, all you're supposed to do is to provide new props. So this is the list that we built originally and that generated the UI we just saw. And let's say that now we want to update the last online text for the first element in the list. What we need to do is to build a new list and make sure that the last online text of the first friend model says what we want it to say. We then call set root again on the little view with a new recycler collection component containing a new list section that takes the newly built list as its prop. We run our code again and let's see what happens. Why are all the items moving away from the screen and then flying back in? We have enabled animations on our list, but we wouldn't really expect all the items to move. Turns out answering our question is not too hard. We can just go and enable the debug login for sections. Let's just open the sections debug class and change the enable flag from false to true. This flag enables all sorts of useful debug logs for what operations sections is performing. Let's recompile our app and open a logcat viewer. I'm using Flipper in this case and see which operations sections is applying every time we try to display new data on the screen. We see that we have two rows with new change set and a change set is basically what gets generated every time we call set root or do an update state for a section. So we can see that both changes that came from set, setting root on our list section in this case, and that's pretty much what we expected. The first change that content is also what we would expect. We start from an empty list and we insert nine friend item components. The change set that is not looking quite right is the second one. Instead of updating the first row as we would expect, we are first removing all the items from the list with a remove range operation, and then inserting nine, nine brand new friend item components. Let's see what's going on behind the scenes once again, 
and what is happening. When we go and set root with a new list of friends, section receives a brand new list where all the objects seem to be different from the ones we saw before. In fact, if you look at the memory addresses, they are all pointing to new memory locations too. Sections at this point can't really figure out which friend corresponds to which friends in the two lists. So what it decides to do is to remove everything that was in the old list and then add everything back from the new list. And this is clearly not what we intended. So how can we fix this? Well, actually data diff section is an API just for that. Let's go back to our list sections spec code and um, let's look what we're doing here. Here, we're only telling the div section how to render a friend item, but not a lot how uh, two friend items should be compared. So the div section exposes an API actually to define a function that compares the identity of two models. What we're saying here is this friend model that represented a given person in the old list still represents the same person in the new list. The function that we just described is called onCheck is same item, and given two models should return true if those models have the same identity or false otherwise. It's really important to notice that an item in the new list should only ever have the same identity of one item in the old list. And if wrong results are returned from this function or having duplicated items in any of the lists will break the diffing logic and cause your application to misbehave and potentially crash. So now that we have implemented our identity function, let's run the code again and see what happens. Mm, that looks better, but still not quite what we were imagining. The rows in our list are not flying around anymore, but they're still all blinking. So let's go and have a look at our debug logs again. It looks like we are now not removing and reinserting all the items anymore, which is a big step forward, but we're still updating all the content in the list, and this is still definitely not what we want. So the problem here is that we are now capable of detecting that a friend in the old list corresponds to a friend in the new list, but we still can't tell whether we need to re-render them or not. Practically speaking, we might be changing the last online text for all of them, and sections needs to understand whether that's happening or not. So luckily this is also pretty easy to fix and we actually have multiple options here. Let's go back to our tables showing the current and the new props. If we look at the memory addresses here, we see that all the objects in the new list are changing their memory address compared to the ones in the currently displayed list, which means that we can't really be sure whether something in the rendering for that item needs to be updated or not. So the obvious solution in this case would be to just change the memory address for the first one. What we can do is we can pretty easily build the new list by just copying the content of the old list and then swapping out the first item for our new friend model. If we do this, we suddenly have the same memory pointers for the items in positions from one to eight and sections can very quickly figure out what to update. Sometimes, though, relying on pointer equality is either not possible or not very practical for various reasons. And if that's the case, another possibility is just to go and implement the equals and hash code on the model object directly. If two models that have to be compared are not pointer equals, sections will still try to figure out whether they actually need to re-render by calling equals on them. In alternative to equality, data if section exposes a third callback. This callback is called onCheck is same content and looks very, very similar to the onCheck is same item we just saw. In this case, the callback is expected to return true if we don't expect any rendering differences between the two models, false otherwise. Now, if we go and employ any of these three methods in our code and we run it again, this is what we get. As you can see, in this case, the only row to update was the one we intended. To double check, let's have a look at the debug output. And again, as expected, we are now only sending an update operation for the item in position zero, which is what we wanted in the first place. So to recap, diffing is extremely important for performance as it reduces the amount of UI operations. If you are unsure about what's happening in your sections code and want to verify which are the operations that sections is performing, you should go and enable the sections debug log. 
And finally, on-chunk ECM item and non-chunk ECM content are extremely important parts of the Sections API and are the keys to an effective diffing. So thanks for watching and happy littering.